Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are making breakfast sausage strata. This is one of my family's favorite dinner, yes I said dinner dishes, as we've never actually had this for breakfast. <laughs> With that being said, you can eat this any time of day you want. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, midnight snack, it doesn't matter. So we're going to start off by browning one pound of sausage. I only had original on hand. I've also used sage sausage, breakfast sausage, and it's always turned out beautifully. So what I'm doing here is chopping it up into like a patty shape. And with it being in the cast iron skillet, it's going to crisp it up and just give it an extra depth of flavor. While the sausage is frying up in your skillet, I'm gonna hop over and start chopping up a small to medium onion. We're looking for about three quarters of a cup here. And this is ultimately going to be added to the sausage when it's about three quarters of the way done. And we're just gonna make it semi-transparent because it will continue to cook in the oven. Once that's all chopped up, we're going to hop back over to the sausage and we're going to flip each piece and see how beautifully browned it is. Now once we get each piece flipped over, I do this chopping method where I chop in one direction and then I chop in the other direction and I don't flip yet. I let the other side get nice and brown. And then after a couple minutes, I'll move everything around in the pan and make sure everything's cooked through. Here, I'm just placing two paper towels in a glass bowl. This particular sausage does not produce a lot of grease. So we're about three quarters of the way through cooking the sausage. I'm gonna go ahead and add the onions. And like I said, it's just gonna help them get a little transparency and they, they will continue to cook in the oven. Now that our sausage is cooked through and our onions are a little transparent, we're going to move everything into this paper towel lined bowl. And this will just help it uh, drain some of the grease off and cool down a little bit because we will be adding eggs and cheese and we don't want to cook the eggs prematurely. Now we're gonna move on to potatoes. I don't always add potatoes to the breakfast strata, but when I do, I'm not particularly a fan of potato skins. But if you are, go ahead and leave the skin on. Just make sure and wash the potato pre-slicing. But here I am going to remove the skin. And once everything's peeled off, since I did not pre-wash before peeling, I'm going to rinse them under cold water. And then on my way back, you're gonna see I have a bowl of water that is cold water that I like to place my potato chunks in. That way the starches in the potato don't make the pieces oxidize. This will also help remove some of the starches as we are going to be cooking these in the same skillet that we cooked the sausage in. Now, if you've ever tried to cook potatoes in the oven, you know that they are going to take forever. So just a little pre-fry before we add them to the strata. It's gonna help cook more evenly and you're not gonna have hard potatoes. Once your potatoes are all chopped up, give them a good swirl, drain the water and I'm using about one tablespoon of olive oil. You can use any oil of your choice. Now 
Now we're going to go back to multitasking. While the potatoes are cooking, we're going to hop over to some bread. Normally, I will use store-bought bread, about five slices. Today, I actually have leftover bread I made for my family a couple days ago. So go ahead and slice up your five pieces. And now we're going to slice them into strips and then one inch cubes. Here I have a 9 by 13 baking pan. The sausage and onion should be cooled down enough to go ahead and start adding everything to the baking pan. And if you see by the paper towel, there is some excess grease, but not a whole lot. And I do have limited space in my kitchen, so we'll go ahead and move the sausage out of the way and start preparing our eggs. I am using the same bowl that we drained the sausage in. To that bowl, we are going to add six large eggs and then one cup of milk. You can use anything you have in your refrigerator or pantry. I have used almond milk, 2% whole milk, but what I had on hand was powdered milk. So what I did to make that was put one third cup into my glass measuring cup and then fill it up with water to equal or come up to the one cup mark and then just whisk it up with either a whisk or a fork. So go ahead and add that to the egg mixture and then we're gonna put in our bread chunks. Let all of the chunks soak up that milk and egg mixture. Stir that to combine and then it's been a minute so we're going to go check on those potatoes, see how they're doing. They look lovely. So we're going to turn that off, grab our 9 by 13 baking pan of sausage and we're going to top the sauce, not sausage, we, yes sausage, oh boy. Okay, now that we're back on track, <laughs> let's go ahead and top the sausage with the potatoes. Now, the sausage has cooled down, but we're going to put the potatoes on the sausage so those can cool down as well. And back to our egg milk bread mixture, we're going to add one cup of cheese. I'm just using pre-shredded store-bought mild cheddar cheese. You can use any cheese that you love, pepper jack. You can shred your own cheese. It's totally up to you. This is just what my family prefers. And then we're going to add one teaspoon of salt. This was a quarter teaspoon that I'm using, so four of those. And then a half a teaspoon of pepper. Mix all of that to combine. I did forget my spoon, so we're back to that. And then I'm gonna bring over these sausage and potatoes. Now at this moment, I'm thinking to myself, boy, does this look thick. And that's probably because I used homemade bread, which if you think about quantity, it's actually, even though it's five pieces, it's more than if I were to use store-bought bread because I cut it so thick. So go ahead and add two extra eggs if it seems a little thick to you and then stir those up to combine as well. Once your two extra eggs are mixed in nicely, we are going to take everything from the bowl and add it into our baking pan and then mix those together. 
Now, this did seem to be a little bit thick again or still. So what we're going to do is add the little bit of heavy whipping cream that I found in the refrigerator when I retrieved the other two eggs. So go ahead and top that off. This is about a quarter of a cup maybe. Add that in there and then we're going to mix again. <laughs> Sorry about that. We have done so much mixing today. Once everything's combined really well, we're going to grab aluminum foil and cover up the baking dish and pop this in the refrigerator. Now this particular day, I only let it sit in the refrigerator for about two hours and then went ahead and baked it. Typically breakfast stratus should be made one day, refrigerated overnight, and then baked it in the morning. But we have never actually had this dish as breakfast. It's always been dinner for us. I'm not sure why, aside from the fact that we really enjoy it. So what I did here was I added the foil, popped it in the fridge, and let it sit for about two hours. Once the family came home, I took it out of the refrigerator, removed the foil, and preheated my oven to 350 degrees. Once that was preheated, it went into the oven for 45 minutes. Now everything is cooked thoroughly aside from the potatoes. So what you're really doing here is just finishing cooking the potatoes and heating everything up, melting the cheese. After 45 minutes, go ahead and remove it from the oven. I usually let it sit for about five to ten minutes because if you eat it right away, it is like molten lava. Ask me how I know. <laughs> if you try out the recipe as is or change it up a little to suit your family style, let me know down in the comments below how it turned out. Thank you so much for watching and if you like what you saw, please consider subscribing and grow with me. Have a great day.